Hello and welcome. I'm really pleased today to be able to announce a major update to Coolvox IPPBX and that is the release of version 3 firmware. Version 3 is a major enhancement and step forward from the existing version 2 firmware and therefore we thought it would be a really good idea to give you a, a brief overview of some of the new features and functionality and the new user interface that's available with version 3 firmware. So we're going to cover this off in three separate videos. Today I'll focus on part one which is the graphic user interface and give you an overview and a demonstration what it looks like. Part two will focus on the ultra zero touch installation features available in version three specifically around things like the uh, Zyco IP phone. Part three will cover some of the advanced features now on offer. So, version 3. Well, version 3 does come with some major updates. First one being, it now contains a quick setup wizard to get you quickly and easily set up and running. It has a much improved user interface, which I'll show you over the coming three videos. It has, again, a very much improved user portal which offers things such as click to dial and has a Windows pop-up where you can view incoming calls and we also have some very good ultra zero touch installation features especially around other Zyku endpoints such as the H series phones and the EX16S FXS gateways so part one the new graphic user interface available within version 3 firmware. Well, the first thing to note, it does have a quick setup wizard. You can complete six simple steps to complete all initial but necessary settings to get your PBX up and working. First, set the language. In this instance, it is English. Second, set up your local network. Here it's showing default settings. Third, set your region. Here we've got China. Four, set your department. Now departments are a new concept within version three. Uh, greater granular control over your organization. Five, create your admin account. Six, set your mail server settings. And finally, reboot and you will be redirected to the login page. Next I'd like to talk about administration rights on the system and version 3 is a multi-user platform so we have administrator logon which gives the administrator full authority of the system and the extension users there is an operator login this typically gives the ability to manage extension user info and receptionist type access finally extension user login which gives the user full control of their handset so an admin user can manage and control the entire Kuvox system including all other users such as the operator and extension user the operator can manage extensions they can view logs and recordings and they can configure common call features an extension user can make and receive calls without installing any plugin to the web browser using WebRTC technology. There's lots more that you can do with what I call the user portal. You can check call logs, perform phone book searches and dial using the Windows phone. You can send faxes. Also, you can play back your voicemail and any call recordings you may have. And here you can see one of the other nice features of the user portal is the Windows pop-up where you can view inbound calls. I'll give you a demonstration of that later. Okay, let's see some of those uh, features in action then. So first I'm going to take you through the setup wizard. So, yep, at the moment this is an early version, there will be more languages available in the production version. Click next. 
is the network set up. So I need to put something suitable for my local network into here. And activate. System will reboot and bring me back to where I was so that I can continue on with the setup. Click next, enter my location. As you can see, there's a long list of countries displayed here and I'm going to select China. Click next. Next section is where we set up our departments. As I mentioned, departments are a new feature and operate in a similar way to ring groups to allow greater granular control for your organization. So I'm going to create a sales department with 10 extensions and the support department with the same 10 extensions. I enter my start extension and click next. On the next screen, we select our operator extension from, from the ones that are available. simplicity I'll select 100 and click next I need to create an administrator account next an operator account Next, I'll set my mail server settings, should I require. And that's it, finished. Okay, next thing I'd like to do is show you the user portal uh, and we'll also have some live demos from our engineers so if i log in as an extension user first thing you'll notice is the phone at the right hand side of the screen uh, using this i can uh, dial out directly from my desktop is a live demonstration of that Well, as you can see, we've dialed the phone from the directly from the desktop, and here it is. It's ringing. Okay. And here's a demonstration of the Windows pop-up that shows an incoming call. We'll also give you a live demonstration of this. So we're dialing from a, an extension, and there you can see the number pops up on your screen. Very useful feature. Let's take a look at some of the other features available in the user portal. 
contacts. So I can see other extension users and I can call them directly from within my user portal. I can view call logs, select a start and an end date. So we have very granular control. I can check my voicemail messages directly from my desktop. Once I've listened to it, I can uh, set the status to red if I wish. Another nice feature, you can send faxes directly from your desktop. So we just need to select a file of the appropriate format. And there's a login facility so you can look back on faxes that you've sent. We can set call forwarding for your extension. And another useful feature is the follow me. This too can be set directly from the user portal. All the feature codes available on the system can be viewed through the user portal. And under settings you can set your extension to do not disturb, activate your voicemail and change a voicemail password. So that's it for our tour of the new GUI and some of the new features. Hope you found this useful and I look forward to see you in part two where we explore some of the auto provisioning features available in Coolbox version 3. Thanks for your time. Goodbye.